Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. Today I'm going to answer the question of whether or not The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is objectively emulated perfectly yet or not in Simu a Wii U emulator. Subjectively you might say that yes of course it is, however objectively I can show you the areas which still need cleaning up. Breath of the Wild has been playable and completable for a long long time now, however it isn't actually emulated 100% correctly. If you're not a Simu Patreon supporter, you won't have had the chance to try Simu 1.14.0, a version which introduces a texture cache rework designed to fix a whole host of visual errors as well as load previously unplayable games. It's not currently available to the public because it's a work in progress build and unstable. 1.14.0 gives us an inside look at the growing pains emulators go through during any change, let alone large ones like this. Jumping right into it, the first obvious bug relates to the sand around Maldugo, a sand monster in the Gerudo Desert. Rather than smooth mounds of sand, we have blocky geometric shapes. The next issue is the teleportation animation which should normally see Link fade away into particles, but here he pops out then into existence. At one point the community cared so much about this animation that I ended up making a video on it, believe it or not. Simu 1.14.0 is said to remove blocky artifacts, which it does. The main culprit of this visual glitch can be seen in Lava. In the past we could solve this by using a tiled cache command in Nvidia Profile Inspector, however that will no longer be necessary, but an unfortunate side effect seems to be an interesting transparency issue when standing horizontal to the lava. So this is the introduction of a new bug. The previous blocky fix for lava using the Nvidia Profile Inspector did not work in shrines where monks would be surrounded by corrupted squares, whether black or white. Simu 1.14.0 does fix the monk issue, but interestingly, also within shrines, we now have a new issue where the design which borders the ceiling randomly hovers in the middle of the air. So. What we have here are a few examples of the growing pains emulators, Simu in this case, go through. Improvements, regressions, positives, negatives, it's such a mixed bag. Naturally you can look to a number of titles and find specific issues which makes the debugging process a nightmare, especially in a game like Bayonetta 2, which as far as I know still has unsolved bugs. Will the final release of Simu 1.14.0 fix all these issues? Maybe, maybe not time will tell. And of course I haven't even included AMD or Intel or perhaps additional missed bugs but the first step is to highlight them and get them out there. I'm sure you'll leave a comment about that. For now the public using Simu 1.13.0 can of course play through the entirety of Breath of the Wild and DLC without major issues. Make sure to subscribe and stick around to follow the different iterations of version 1.14.0 to see where it ends up. Now there can be no doubt that many of you out there have completed Breath of the Wild and thoroughly enjoyed your experience which is ultimately the end goal, to play a game and have fun and having the opportunity to do it at a higher resolution and frame rate is undeniably an incredible achievement. Simu 1.14.0 shows us what it has improved so far but also the new never before seen issues it's introduced. The current work in progress build 3 of a suspected many before it reaches the public means that this is all subject to change. Breath of the Wild has had its fair share of growing pains. Let me take you back a little. Breath of the Wild was released on March the 3rd 2017 for Wii U and Switch and soon after it was already running on Simu to the amazement of many. The first video I did on Breath of the Wild was on March the 18th and in that video we were in game but with a whole host of bugs. The main one which immediately comes to mind is a bug where Link would sink into the ground and couldn't make physical contact with water. We were also missing the grass, Simu hook and FPS++ at that time. Physics, performance, visuals and gameplay were all over the place and improvements were gradual. So many bugs have come and gone and come again that I lost count. Another strange issue which I remember was a bug where the camera inside shrines would get locked in place. If you started your Breath of the Wild experience in 2018 then you probably saved yourself a lot of headaches especially if you use an Nvidia GPU and not AMD. Ultimately following the progression of an emulator is a challenging one. You have the side of the developer 
who is focused on technical aspects related to accuracy. Then on the other hand, you have the community with their specific demands, often not interested or caring about technical details. The interesting thing for me is that even with all the focus Breath of the Wild received, it still isn't quite there on an accuracy level, which goes to show how difficult developing an emulator can be. Huge breakthroughs do happen from time to time in emulation, such as the asynchronous shader in RPCS3, but generally the rule of thumb is be patient and expect baby steps. That trend does seem to be changing somewhat, however, depending on which team you look at. For example, Switch emulation, which is absolutely flying. So there you have it. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. Complaining Gamer social media links are also there. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like. If you didn't dislike and to stay up to date with all things emulation, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you in the next one.